Right, hello everyone, welcome back. Quick turnaround to part 12, welcome to Escape the Maze. So if you caught that last video, this one on YouTube, and had a look at it with that technology, what they've got, what they can actually um, use, you know, and desalination plants, the technology's there, what I'm getting at, is it doesn't need to be so it's lack so is what it must be manufactured this stuff you know it must be this this starvation what we're taught and feed the world and all of this what is actually happening if if you know by examples you know that last video if you watch it then you can get if you wanted to that could lead down a strand of weather modification and all of this stuff which is uh something that needs to be taken into account massively with what's going on now and that could open your eyes up to quite a lot of things as climate change and lead you into other stuff uh of what them big white streaks are in the sky what we call chemtrails or chemical trails um, and all of this type of stuff so these are just little paths that can go down but you can see by that video which is one minute long one minute long that you know, if there's drought or anything going on, now we can start seeing it with open eyes. Hang on a minute, we can, there's technology there. What could be used for nefarious uh, times as well or, or, or moments that they need to. So you need to make judgments for this yourself, you know. But these are just slightly opening your eyes up at this level, what we're going into. You know, like I say, there's people out there massively further ahead than this. But we're going to get we're going to get there. We're doing the journey together. So this is where it go a little bit interactive, where I can sort of say, if you if you can just watch little videos here and there and then we go from there. But so I've got one more to do. I've just got one more to do. Because I just want to emphasise the fact of what I'm saying. Now, a lot of people scratching their heads with, with uh, mouth. I just had someone in here and they just watched the video. I said, what do you think? And they said, well, you know, I'm a bit of a, a dullard when it comes to maths. Or sort of but I got, I got what you were saying. And that's all I wanted to get into this is that there's abundance. There's abundance here, right? So this one's going to be a little bit... Ooh, I want to do this one with apples, right? So let's just check this out. Just going to uh, just try and sort of like whiz through it a little bit. But um, so we've got, say, apple here. Each apple um, has two to four seeds in it, pips, seeds. Uh, we'll go with two, we'll go with the lesser, right? So two seeds two seeds in an apple um, you go plant the seeds you eat the apple and you plant the seeds obviously um, it takes two to ten years um, for a tree to grow <coughs> an apple tree um, all depends whether you you know how you grow it or whether you put it into rootstock or whatever if you're growing it from seed it's usually around about eight to ten years so we'll go with eight years okay so after eight years so i'm just going to whiz through this one just to emphasize my point a little bit more if you're still with me eight years after planting right so eight years after planting after planting after planting we will have two trees right so we've got times two trees right it's after eight years uh each one producing each tree producing 300 apples right conservative and we'll do one crop a year right that'll do us one crop a year <coughs> so we're still going to stay on the path for these 35 years just to emphasize the fact of what what has happened in that 35 years is not a lot you know lack you know <coughs> so each producing 300 apples so 600 so each producing 300 apples so oh yeah so we've got 600 apples out of the trees each with two seeds so a 600 times a 600 times two equals 1200 right 
That's 1,200. 1,200 seeds, eight years, right? So the, fir so the first two trees will keep producing all along, won't they? So you're in the time frame, in fact, it took eight years, and that's our first crop. Every crop after that will still produce 1,200 seeds. So seven years, 1,200, six years. So going back, every year will produce the crop, crop of 1,200, but you'll just get the first 1,200 coming through, then the next year, the next 1,200 coming through, the next year. So you can see how massive this can get really, really quickly with these trees. So. After 16 years, let's just go here. After 16 years, after 16 years, right? We've got 1,200 trees each with 300 apples, right? 1,200 trees each with 300 apples. That's 360,000 apples, right? 360,000 apples. Times that by two, right? That's 720,000 seeds, right? 720,000 seeds, right? So you can see the acceleration of this. With all the other 1,200 seeds coming through, and they all arriving at this point here, crop after crop, trees growing, trees growing, trees growing, seeds coming down everywhere. You're planting all of these on the land, right? After 20 years, 20 years, right? 20 years. We're talking about the melons, 75 billion in two years, right? 20 years. The number, the numbers of these apples and the number of these trees growing exponentially is in their billions and billions and billions. And this is one of the longest you'd have to wait. That's billions and billions. And that'll just keep on going and going and going. In the meantime, everything that produces a seed would be growing exponentially. Like I said, each crop, more and more and more seed harvest. And you can see, like... <laughs> There's, 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 there's massive and massive amounts here. There's a food for everyone, all in their different, the lands where they reside in, you know. So where is the lack? You know, like if we've got, if they're saying that we've got all the technology, like I said, desalination plants, machines that can produce rain here and there or whatever they want to do, why is it that there is starvation? Why is it that there's lack? So that just adds to just open them eyes up a little bit just to see that it is an anti-life system. They're keeping all of it. This is where, like I say, like this, this is where I feel anyone out there that's got a lawn or luckily enough to have a lawn or if you've got a yard, you know, you can still do raised beds, you know, to try and sort of get into growing, growing some, some food for yourself just to see how you get on, you know? But if you do do it, try and use heirloom seeds, right? And if you ever heard of heirloom seeds, just go on for a quick search. This is where you just have to do a little bit of work. Heirloom seeds. And just check out what they are because they're not only good for you or really good for you, the bees like them and stuff like that as well. Don't go to the supermarkets, okay? Don't go to uh, like the garden centers and stuff like that because they're corrupt seeds. You know, at the end of it, you're going to get GMO out of that. You know, the seeds are not good. So the seeds are GMOs. You put them in, they're going to produce GMO foods for you, G GMO fruits and veg, you know? So heirloom seeds will come. And what we'll talk about the heirloom seeds is, is that with heirloom seeds, uh, when you get a seed and you've got some land or soil and take your, take, your, take your lawns up, start growing, you know what I mean? Give it to your neighbours. This is where it all starts in community. You know, I know it's just a big, that's a big ask, but if you just start off small, herb garden or whatever, you'll... 
just see how it all goes. But I would really advise just to get start with the heirloom seeds. And what I do with the heirloom seeds is try this. Is what we call it. We call it DNA transference. A lot of people would have heard of this. It's DNA transference. That means that get the seed and put the seed, the heirloom seed, in your mouth and under your tongue and hold it there for a few moments. What happens with that is, is that your DNA will transfer into the seed, okay? The seed and you will know each other. You'll become each other. That will have a memory within it. Plant that seed into the ground or the soil where you are, and that seed will know what you are lacking physically within you. Okay, so that will grow with more of that in. That will grow with, say you're lacking magnesium within your system, the seed will pick up on that and that will give that fruit or that veg more magnesium within it to compensate what you're lacking. This is what food, this is a great relationship we have, what's been lost with with food and, and all of this great stuff that has been lost to us. So with that, but don't do that, whatever you do, with um, the seeds that come from like your garden centers. Don't, <coughs> don't put them in your mouth because they've got rat poison on and you'll get ill because they want that, they don't want the stuff, what's well, nice out of that. But, so that's my advice. Look at the heirloom seeds, look at the DNA, and start trying to grow a little bit for you, and then that will that will link you into the, you know the soil, what it needs, and then it will also link into alkaline and acidic uh, acidic uh, systems within you to change from an acidic to an alkaline, and then that will lead you down another path. What we can go down as well. Um, so. With all of this, what we're saying here, with all of the abundance of what we actually have here, we live in a system that creates lack. Now, I know I've sort of like accelerated through and just punched it in. If you want to get on your calculators and work it all out, you can do. But the, but the actual end of that story is, is that there is a lot here. There is a, there is a lot of, uh, of everything in abundance and and why are we got lack you know and plus the fact if you've got space in the back garden or your yard you know uh, there's loads of things on youtube about growing herb gardens and and all your fruit and veg upwards you know what i mean you don't need huge amounts of space but you can sustain yourself with a little bit of room what you could have all right then that's not a new idea to be growing, you know, like some of the stuff we're getting out of supermarkets and all of this are not too great, you know what I mean? Like, so if you start getting into growing for yourself, at least you know what fruit and veg and, and what comes straight from where you've grown it and been frozen 10 times, battered around, grown by people what don't really care. Whereas if you give the all of your little garden or whatever you've got, the love and the nurturing of that, that will respond, you know, and you'll get a huge amount of uh, health benefits out of that. And that's, and that's what we're all after. So this can really lead into a lot of stuff, you know, and this is, this is one of my main objectives here is to help because I care, you know, and I care about getting this stuff out there to you people, you know, and, and um, and seeing people getting healthier and not taking the tablets that they don't need to take because nature is giving you your medicine, you know, instead of um, trusting someone else that hasn't, like we said before, got your best interests at heart. So if you're going to go down this route, you know, um, feed the world, feed your neighbours, you know, feed each other, start getting into it. You'll try this, you know, bang a bag of potatoes somewhere. It goes a long way with someone, you know, and plus the fact you're getting them into heirloom as well and that can change systems out. So it's just about, um, just about getting the consciousness back into all of us that maybe, maybe we don't need to take them pharmaceuticals. Maybe we've already got them. Maybe we've already got you know, nature's way of, 
have given us our health. And if we get conscious about it and care enough about it, then maybe we can get onto that drift, you know. But um, definitely check it out, you know, if, if you want to, if you've got time, I'd take a little bit back. But, you know, if you can get an allotment in, in the near future or whatever, or two of you or three of you have a co-op allotment where one's work and the other one go and vice versa, it'd be great, you know, and I'd get you together and uh, get you talking, you know, and all this type of stuff. So um, I just wanted to do that one for you. So, um I'll, I'll see you soon. You take it easy. Much, much love from me to you. Much love from Escape the Maze and uh, all good stuff to you. So you take it easy. Okay, much love. Bye-bye.